Okay, this video is to show how to create a XY scatter plot with a linear trend line that displays the equation of the line uh, using Google Docs to do this. See, the first thing I did here is I just went to the Google homepage and I signed in under my iGoogle account. And I'll go up to the More Features and select Documents. If you wanted to create a new document, you see over here there's Create New, and we're going to use a spreadsheet for this purpose. But I already created a spreadsheet, very simple right now that will just display the percent sugar, the measured density. And these were our stock solutions, everywhere from 0% sugar up to 20. And I just randomly selected these values of 1 to 1.17. And they are values that should make some sense for our data. We know that the equation of a line in slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Uh, without knowing any of that, I can just select this data right now, though, and click insert and go down to chart. You will see right away though when I choose the scatter chart that I do not have an option to create a linear trend line. Now it connects those all of the points but it does not anywhere on here give me an option to display an equation. So that can be somewhat problematic and I believe to be a shortcoming in the Google Docs features at this point. However we can get around that difficulty by using some features that are built into Google Docs. And that's using a function that will allow us to display the slope of a line that would be formed from these x and y values and the intercept of that line. Apply that slope and intercept we found to the equation y equals mx plus b. So to find the slope, I just labeled it there and simply we'll use the slope formula. And as we look at it, it tells us to use data y comma data x. These will be my y values, the density, so I will select them, comma, and then select the x values, and my parentheses, and there's the slope of this line. You can see it gives me a ton of decimal places. For the intercept, I will do the same thing, and the function is just called intercept. And this would be the y-intercept of the line. In the same feature, data y, data x. So I'll select the y data, comma, x data, and then my parentheses. So right now I know the equation of the line. It would be y equals m. This is my m, x, plus, and this is my b value. Um, if I want to actually have my spreadsheet display that, it can be a little bit tricky, but we'll walk ourselves through it. It's not too terribly bad. What I'm actually going to do is write a function that will be a combination of text and these numbers, the slope and the intercept number. The way that I will do that is I will write equals to start my function. And for the portion that will be in text, I'll put that in quotes. So I'll put quote f of x equals, and that's the ending of the text part, because the next part I want to be the m value. Now we need to use this and operator when we're stringing together text and other functions. So um, that was the purpose of the and. I'll select that cell, which is b10, and to conclude that with another and. And the next thing I'm stringing together is more text, and that is the x part of this, plus, and lastly I want to end my text part, and then finish up with the intercept. You see, here's the equation of my line. You can notice right away that it looks a little bit ugly because it displayed a ton of decimal places, which we don't need all of those. What you can do is that you can alter this formula so that it will round both this, the slope value, and the intercept value. And let's look at how we would do that. I'll go back into my formula, and I'll use the round function. And I'll round that number, and I'll put a comma to how many decimal places I want to round it to. So let's say I select 5. And I'll do the same thing up here. I'll round this, the 11 to another 5 decimal places. So now it looks a lot cleaner and neater for us. As you notice, the, the y-intercept value has six significant figures, and the m value has three significant figures. So if we are inputting a value into this equation, we want to make sure that it will provide us as an output value at least as many significant figures. Well, the same amount of significant figures as our input value. So if I have a four or five significant figure number, then my m value will be mildly problematic. So I can alter that very simply by changing, instead of rounding to five decimal places, I could round to seven or eight, and I'll select eight here and 
Now that will give us my six significant figures that I might need. Okay, so now I'm showing the equation of the line. The next thing we need to do is find that exact linear line um, so that Google Docs will display it as a perfectly straight line. And I'll do that by using my x values here, my percent of sugar, mass by mass, and solve this function for x. So I'll evaluate the function these six different times for x. So here's how I'll do that. I will say that this cell will be equal to mx plus b. Well, here's my m, here's my x, and here's my b. So m times x plus b. And here's that first one evaluated. Um, but watch what happens now as I begin to drag this down um, to fill this in automatically for a few different cells. You see that the values begin to go to zero. So let's examine the function to see why that happens. And I see in this case that this is saying that the function would be equal to mx, but as you see here, it says that m is in b13, whereas my m value is really in b10. Up here, my m was Oops, I'm actually altering the formula, which I didn't intend to do. Um, up here, the M is B13, B12, B15. So clearly, the M and the B values are both altering along the way. And in this case, I don't want them to alter. I just want my X values to change, but I want this and this to stay constant. So let's look at how we can do that fairly easily. I'm in my formula. For the values that I want to stay constant, I will use the dollar sign. So the B10 I want to stay the same, so that will be constant B, constant 10. And my A2 I want to change, so I'll leave that alone. And the B11 I want to change, so that will be constant B and constant 11. It provides it the same value, which we should expect, but now as I fill this down, it fills it in appropriately. Okay, so now that I'm at this point, I can go ahead and make my graph. Um, I have my X values and I have the Y values that I actually measured in lab here, and then I have the Y values of the perfect linear trend line. So same thing, insert, and I will insert my chart, and I'll go to the XY scatter again, and I'll title this graph. As we know, we want to number and title all of our graphs. My X axis is percent sugar, and make sure we know that it's uh, mass mass and my vertical axis is density and once again we need to include the units so this would be grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter okay so here I have my chart uh, if I want it to look a little nicer I can put it onto its own sheet I can examine it slightly better and here's my calibration curve you notice that the blue data as it says over here is my measured density and that is not a perfectly straight line because my measurements were not perfect as I don't expect them to be. Um, but then here my new line, my red line, is what you get when you do apply a linear trend line and it displays the equation of that linear trend line as well. It displays the equation because that was the heading of this column. It also tells me that that's measured density grams per cubic centimeter because that was the heading of that column as well. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you.